Welcome to another edition of It's Your City. Happy New Year to everyone here in Carson City. My name is Jim Shirk, Board of Supervisors, Ward 4. Let me just get started and dive right into a couple subjects. First off, let me talk about redevelopment. Redevelopment generates in sales and sales revenue from property tax and so forth about $1.5 million annually. I'm just going to refer to my notes a little bit. From that, we are left with two about $225,000 or roughly each district would get about $100,000 annually. But if you look at the numbers, what we have from that $1.5 million, we have about $260,000 going out in salaries. Plus we have an additional $111,000 going out in car allowances, Medicare, phone allowance, retirement, workman's compensation for a total of about $400,000 from redevelopment goes for funding of, of salaries and so forth. I had just mentioned to the finance director and to the deputy acting city manager, Ms. Works, that her salary should not come out of redevelopment, but should come from the manager's um, funding. And I think they both agree to that. We'll find out here shortly, but I, I think they're in agreement with that. If you look at how much money is coming into redevelopment and where we're headed with redevelopment, my hope for 2014 is that we have some goals established from redevelopment of what they want to accomplish in 2014 for the community and what goals they might have accomplished in 2013. What is really staggering to look at on these numbers is $480,000 go to the car sales to keep them here so we can get their sales tax revenue coming back the other way. There's a couple of things hinging on this. One, Reno may pass a bill that says if you're a Reno resident and you buy a car in Carson City, the sales tax revenue there will come back to Reno. Now granted, Carson City can do the same thing. If you're here and you go buy a car there, it comes back to Carson City. But a half a million dollars goes, and I understand why we did it. I'm just wondering if we can look at the sales tax revenue and say, can't we take it out of sales tax revenue, put it back in redevelopment to help us to, to improve our community? Now, early next month or in March, we'll be augmenting the budget. In that budget from prior discussions, there's about a million dollars that the Board of Supervisors can look at and dictate where that money will go into what fund or it could go into capital improvements. We could fund it to whatever we want, but there's about a million dollars in there and we're going to be looking at that. Also, capital improvements. That led me to this discussion about capital improvement. Again, I'm going to refer some notes here. We have 27 top priorities in our capital improvement, which total about $1.5 million. Now, what is not in that category from 1 to 27 is the MAC building and the animal shelter. Also, of course, the, uh, we don't have an ambulance built in there. But what is really important to look at here is out of those priorities, the animal shelter didn't even rank. And through my discussions and conversations with staff, we have never set aside money for the animal shelter. Now the MAC building gets funding from question 18. The reason they're on the coming up, and I'll talk about it in a moment, the one is sales tax. The, the reason both of these items are on that one is sales tax to fund is there's no money for them. And I'll touch base with, on those two items here shortly. Now, recently, most of you probably saw an article in the Nevada Appeal which they ask all board members their priority for 2014. The majority of the board members mentioned that um, the corridor improvements and the new selection of the city manager. Mine was somewhat different and eventually I did get to the city manager, but let me touch base on some of the items I felt was very important. And the first was, I believe as a board member, we should receive our agenda item with all the backup in a more timely fashion. Right now we receive them Thursday night, Friday morning. So we have Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We have four days to look at the agenda item, ask questions of staff, investigate, find solutions, and look for alternatives. Four working days. And in some cases we're talking millions of dollars that we have to make and decide and vote yay or nay on. I believe we can easily accomplish this and it would help the community and the Board of Supervisors across the board if we get that agenda item sooner. There cannot be any reason that we cannot work this out to everyone's satisfaction. 
The second thing, I, I'd like to have updates from city staff as to what was accomplished this month and what we hope to accomplish next month, such as meeting with public entities, community organizations, and just some update. Really on the horizon is Fuji Park and that fair, they call it the 150 year anniversary of Nevada. This is gonna be a huge event for Carson City. Miss Works is doing a fabulous job from what I can see. She's got the Cal Comstock Cowboys coming. She has a rodeo event coming. I think it's gonna be a sold out event. I hope to see everyone there. Also on my list of top priorities, I wanted to look at and re-examine street maintenance and repair and snow removal. We need to look at this fund, find out maybe in our augmentation of the budget, we can put some funds into here and help those. So hopefully that can come, come about. And my final one was Carson City. I believe we need to sponsor more family events. I even went so far as to say at the Nevada Day Parade, it'd be great if you went there and there was a section of that parade that was free of tobacco and alcohol, a more friendly atmosphere for city families. Going back to the selection of the city manager, what is really important and what is really lost in the conversation, it is not so much, when, when the candidates come before the board, we will have a choice between probably two, possibly three candidates for the next city manager. But what happens prior to that meeting and our final selection is the committees or stakeholders that were put together to narrow the field from the applicants say 20 applied, they're going to narrow the field to those two or three that come to the board. That is really a huge important step on who sits on those committees to make the selection and narrow the field of the next city manager. That is so critical because we, we as a board will only have a choice between, like I said, two to three candidates. So being on that stakeholder is key very key for who, who we select in the future. And what I would like to talk about is at the last board meeting, there was a discussion from uh, Ms. Works, acting city manager, that there were two community meetings, one on the 21st, one on the 29th. One was at Fuji Park, not televised. The other one was at uh, the community center. I disagreed with the timing. I disagreed that it wasn't televised. And I must congratulate Ms. Works for coming back and bringing back in that same day, within an hour, coming back with a proposal, which I accepted because I believe it really, she really did help the community here. And what that was, was we're going to have two meetings on the 21st, one from 9 to 11, the second one, 2 to 4. Now, they're not televised. The, second, or the third meeting will be held on January 29th at the community center. That will be televised. Reaching a compromise is probably the best thing that anyone can do, any elected official, we do it in our marriage, we do it with our children, we do it in every relationship, we find compromise. And I didn't get everything I wanted, but I believe Ms. Works did a fabulous job of bringing this together, and I compromised, and I think that's what elected officials need to do. In that line, I do want to talk briefly about the corridors. Again, I'm going to refer to my notes. These corridors, taking out the idea of the MAC building and the animal shelter, I'll just talk directly about these corridors. It is imperative that citizens really try and make it to these meetings and have a voice. Try to understand what's trying to be accomplished by the one in sales tax. These projects, all quarters together, will total anywhere from 14 to 20 million dollars, roughly, estimates. And it's imperative that you understand what we're trying to accomplish and what the goals are and how we get there and what this tax will do. And your input is very, very important. You need to notify board, all board members on your position, what you think is right for the community. Also down the line, all board members will be sitting here prior to that vote. Hopefully they too will express to you their viewpoints and have input to help you make a decision. Now there's a couple of things here that's very, very important. One, in all corridors, if you were to add them up, there's 449 properties and there's 834 businesses within all corridors. I believe every business, every property owner should be notified of these meetings. You're talking roughly 1,200 people. If you mailed out a letter, you're talking roughly $600. They need to be notified because previous meetings that set up on these corridors only had three to five businesses attend the meeting. Also, what's imperative to know and learn is the costs that will go into each corridor. One corridor in particular, the downtown corridor, will be receiving $7 million. Now, 
what we're going to do is expand the sidewalk, put a bike path in. There's a couple of things here that it's very difficult uh, to comprehend. One is, who made the selection of, of the sidewalks and the bike path? I certainly didn't have input on it. I know, generally speaking, there has been meetings, and the group sponsoring this did attend. I didn't see many other individuals from the community. I like the fact that, that we should have opened this up for discussion. Where do we want wider sidewalks, bike path, and just have input. And that's what these future community meetings will do. There's three of them. I hope you will attend one of them. And again, we're roughly looking at for the sales tax revenue from the one in sales tax, you're looking at anywhere from on the high and low, it can go either way, 14 to $20 million. And will generate from the one in sales tax about a million dollars a year. Now, should sales tax uh, take a decline, then we're gonna run into some problems of how to pay for the bond we just did for these corridors. And also in the discussion at all community meetings, what public works will be doing to implement improvements to their sewer or water lines cannot be part of the conversation because that cannot be intertwined with what the sales tax will pay for. What the sales tax will pay for should only be discussed, not what the public works and will be doing for water and sewer lines. That has nothing to do with your sales tax being raised to, to accommodate these projects. So in that respect, 2014, February 20th, the board will be voting on all these, the MAC, the animal shelter, all the corridors, and you're looking at a sales tax increase to pay for these. Your input, your family's input is very, very important. You need to contact all the board members within our community to let them know. I hope, please invite me, I'll come speak to any group. Uh, as often as I can. I'm always open to email. You can text me, you can email me. My name is Jim Shirk, Board of Supervisors, Carson City. My address, email, is jshirk at carson.org. I'd love to hear from you and I look, have a great 2014. Carson City, state capital of Nevada, a great place to work, live, play, and raise a family. Thank you for your time.